Hi, my name is Michael with Iconosys. Today we'll be doing a real-time workflow video communicating Shutterstream 360 product photography software in the motorized turntable shooting workflow. Now, Shutterstream 360 is designed for users of any skill level to create high quality results fast and efficiently. It does support four different turntable shooting modes, one of them being working with a motorized continuous spin turntable. The software is compatible with a long list of cameras from Canon, Sony, Nikon, as well as phone cameras from iPhone and Android. Uh, the camera that we're working with today is a Canon camera connected via USB to our computer. Uh, this turntable is just a basic kind of on off switch turntable that spins at a continuous rotation. Uh, the full rotation speed of this turntable is about 100 seconds per full revolution. And uh, our lighting is just a very basic lighting setup. Two lights up front to focus on the subject, then a light on our backdrop. So without further ado, let's get started and we'll turn our attention over to the software. Okay, so we've launched the software and the first step we want to do is enable our live view. I will click the live view button and you will see a live view of what your camera sees pop up. As you can see, me putting my hand back and forth in front of the camera. I will next take my object and place it in the center of the turntable. So that looks pretty good there. Uh, what we're going to notice on the screen first and foremost is that's pretty far out of focus and it looks a little bit underexposed. So while in live view mode, if we click control camera, that's going to pop up our camera settings. If you recall, our camera is connected to our computer via USB and that's going to allow us hands-free photography. So the first thing I want to do is if you look at this little rectangle down here, that's actually going to be where our kind of our camera's focal area and our one-to-one -one view will be. So I will click, uh, right click over top of the shoe and I will hit the AF button and that will bring everything back into focus for me. Should I wish, I can actually view it up close and make very fine focal point adjustments using the focal point adjustment tool here, near and far. Uh, so that looks pretty good there. Let me just fit that back to screen. And now that we have our object in focus, the next thing we want to do is correctly expose our image. Again, it looks a little bit dark, so I'm going to go ahead and open up my shutter speed. And if you watch on the screen, from I'm going to go from one eighth of a second to one fourth of a second shutter speed, which should open up the shutter for longer, and it's going to make it a lighter image. And as you can see, when I made that change, it actually showed me the exposure simulation in real time. Let me just give you another kind of more drastic change there. So if I change my, for instance, my aperture from 11 to 16, we're gonna see that change in real time. So it's kind of a what you see is what you get with the live view through the exposure simulation. So that looks good there. Um, our next step, what we wanna do is pre-crop our subject. Now that will be defining an area that we wish to shoot. So if you follow my mouse here, you're gonna see I click and drag after enabling crop, I clicked and dragged over the live view window and it's only going to take a picture of what's inside this crop area that I just defined. Now my last step should I wish would be to pre-rotate my turntable. Uh, this turntable just has a basic off and on switch. So let me just click it on here and we're going to see the shoe start to move. And again, this turntable is pretty slow. It takes about 100 seconds to spin a full 360 rotation. Um, so I would have to sit here for a hundred seconds to actually view to see if I did, you know, if my object's spinning on axis in the center of the turntable, usually rotating about 90 degrees, you'll have a pretty good idea. So let me just turn off my turntable here. And if I'm not mistaken, if I turn back on my turntable, it's going to rotate back the other way. So we're just going to say, okay, that looks pretty good there. we we'll position our object in the center. And what I want to do is just move my turntable to relatively close to my starting position. Um, while it's doing this, I should mention we do have fully computer controlled turntables that are much faster than this. Um, if you are in a high production environment where you need to shoot a lot of 360 product views, uh, that might be something that's worthwhile um, to you know further automate and streamline the 360 uh, product photography process. So, okay, we've said thumbs up, our object's position in the center. We have adjusted our crop, and I might just add a little bit more crop to each side just to be extra safe. 
And what I want to do is up in the options area, I will go to select turntable and I want to choose continuous turntable. A continuous will be a motorized turntable that will rotate at a consistent spin rate. So now that I've done that, I will click my shoot 360s button. And what this is going to do is allow me to um, define a couple things here. So first and foremost is going to be my number of images that I wish to shoot. And the next thing will be my image capture, which is auto. So it's going to automatically trigger my camera every X number of seconds here. So knowing that my turntable takes a full 100 seconds to rotate a full 360 rotation, I'm going to decide if I want to shoot, say, 33 frames in total. I will enter 33 frames here. And what I want to do is take a picture every three seconds. So now we're ready. We've defined, um, again, it's three times 33 equals 99, which is close enough to 100 seconds to give us our full 360 image capture. So when I'm ready to get started shooting, I will hit the start button. What I should note here is you probably want to turn your turntable on first. We'll let it start rotating, and then I will go ahead and hit start, and that will start my capture process. Again, it's going to wait three seconds for every capture, and then it's going to crop my image. So there we can see image one. You just probably heard it capture image two, image three, etc. And we'll, uh, we'll just speed up this video for the purpose of keeping things quick for you. All right, so we've just completed our image capture as we can start to take a look at the images here. One thing I probably should have noticed is you're going to see it's a tad bit blurry in the toe um, and in some parts of the frame. I should have probably used a faster shutter speed. Um, but uh, anyways, it looks pretty good overall and definitely good enough for the purpose of the demo. I'm going to select all my images and enter into the editing area. As again, Shutterstream is a complete uh, turnkey software that will allow you not only to automate your capture images, but also batch process and kind of create your web ready 360 product views very efficiently. So here's in the editing suite. Uh, we have a lot of different tools inside of here. Maybe for our website, we need pure white backgrounds. I'm going to use my color picker tool and I can start to see that I have not shot this on pure white. We're fairly close. Um, so maybe what I want to do is make a small adjustment to my levels tool. And we will make that. And that's taken our background to pure white, it looks like. We have obviously a little drop shadow underneath. Um, let me just add a tad bit of contrast here too. And maybe what we want to do is also add some sharpness to our 360 image set. So I make those changes, then I can hit apply. And that will apply to every single image as long as they're all highlighted, which it looks like they are. All right, so after our image editing is complete, uh, we have a couple different options. Uh, usually what users will do is both options. First, I'm gonna communicate batch saving. A lot of our customers just have a need for their individual frames. Uh, so we'll just go ahead, give it a name. It's gonna batch rename everything for us. Uh, the other thing that we can do is uh, also batch resize. So I'm gonna choose you know, 1400 pixels wide for the size and that's going to automatically resize everything through one click. Uh, the other thing that you can do is obviously choose your output format, uh, JPEG, PNG, TIFF, WebP or RAW image format. Um, I'll just choose a JPEG and we will hit apply. And we're going to see this process is very quick. So let's output that entire set of images in just a couple seconds. Now our other last step will be obviously creating a 360 product view. So I'm going to click this 360 creator icon. Let me just resize this window here. And I'm going to choose not to resize my images, but there's an example of what we've just created here. So an interactive 360 product view very fast and efficiently. Inside of here, you do have full customization of your 360 product view, so you can choose obviously the you know the overall output size, uh, the spin duration, the mouse control, the zoom level, etc. Um, also the button location, color, style. Um, so just you know fully customizable web ready 360 product views through the 360 creator. So uh, very fast and efficient for creating your 360 product photography.
The name of the software is Shutterstream 360. The company name is Iconesis. And if you have any questions, we're here for you. Thank you.